Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a treat for you today because this battle that's about to unfold is one of the closest that I've had in a really long time. Even though I'm sure Game Freak is lying to us about aspects of this game, but that's a whole nother story. You gotta wait to the end to kind of see what happens. Regardless, I've got the most random team assembled of all time going up against some very large threats. So let's get into the match. Listen, you know who doesn't get enough love? Freaking Mudsdale. I'm all about trying to shine some light on Pokemon that I think are underrated. Mudsdale, he may just be a horse, literally just a horse, but he's a very large boy and super fun to use. So if you're into that type of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300K this year and that is my goal. Help me out. Anyway, uh, they end up leading off with the Tinkaton, big ass hammer versus horse. I decided to just go right for the Stealth Rock. As turn one, they instead say, you don't look hungry and just knocks the apple straight out of Mudsdale's mouth. No more leftovers for me. And that's just honestly rude. So just by being hit by an attack, I do get that stamina boost. So I'm sitting at a nice plus one defense here and I actually have a really good matchup against the Tinkaton. Uh, so they decide to end up switching out and bring in the Great Tusk. So this thing comes in on an earthquake here and you can pretty much expect this thing to rapid spin or set up Stealth Rock of its own. Regardless, you know, with that plus one defense, I'm feeling, I'm feeling horsey over here. I'm feeling fine, nice and defensive. So I decided to just stay in and go for another earthquake here because two more should knock this thing out. Plus, you know, Great Tusk is one of the scariest mons in the game right now and just being able to get this thing into chip range is super nice. So it did go for the rapid spin. Uh, that does activate another layer of the stamina here. So I'm sitting at plus two and there's never been a thicker horse, I swear to God. Look at the absolute size of this lad, truly a unit. So honestly, the Great Tusk doesn't have much to do to me, especially at plus two. So I decide, expect the switch, go for the uh, Stealth Rock again. I say, you knock my apple out of my mouth, I'm just gonna put these Stealth Rocks right back here. Cause if we're playing those types of games, that's what you're gonna get. So I do end up with the Stealth Rock on the field, which is really nice. And they go into the Decidueye. So at this point in the match, I do wanna conserve the Mudsdale a little bit. I know that it has a decent matchup against things on their team like the Tyranitar. Plus, expecting a Leaf Blade, I decide to go into my straight up engine and instead they go for the Spirit Shackle, which you know makes me so that I can no longer escape. And I decide that rather than trying to get some chip on this thing, I'm actually just gonna go for the Parting Shot. So they try to Sucker Punch, that does fail. Um, and Parting Shot is gonna allow me to switch out regardless of the fact that I am shackled in here. So I do wanna conserve the Vroom just because I, being able to outspeed things with the Choice Scarf and having that uh, access to uh, Parting Shot is super nice, but what that does now, this Decidueye sitting at minus one attack is not very scary. Plus, I decide to send in something that is scary, and that is my boy Scrimp, who's gonna intimidate this thing, scariest Scrimp in town, and now at minus two attack. It's looking like Gyarados is actually pretty free to set up here, and I have a solid matchup against pretty much their entire team. So Gyarados might be able to pop off here, uh, so they're basically forced to switch because that Decidueye can't, you know, spirit shackle its way out of a wet paper bag. And they decide to go into the Tinkaton. So, Hammer over here is a little bit of a threat. Now, this Gyarados is actually going to be running Terra Ground. Um, so I can get some really solid damage on an Earthquake here if I decide to go for the Terra route. Um, however, I'm really afraid, since there hasn't been a Terra on their side yet, I'm really expecting this thing to potentially be Terra Flying or something like that. So after thinking about it for a minute, I decide to instead just go for the Waterfall, expecting them to go for the Terra Flying. So they actually do end up going for the Terra here, and I'm thinking, hell yeah. I got your ass. Gyarados does not play that shit, but it's actually just Terra Fairy. So, I mean, that's fine, because I still am going to get Stab on my Waterfall, and it's going to do you know, relatively similar damage. It should be a two-hit KO here. Plus, I know Bulky Gyarados can take an attack in this thing easy. Uh, so Waterfall knocks it below half, and unfortunately... Support Tinkaton is gonna in fact go for the Thunder Wave. So I really, I should have gone for the Terra Ground there anyway. Not being able to be paralyzed would actually been super nice and then this Gyarados could have done some Lake of Rage Rampage type shit. But we are still bulky Gyra. I'm still at plus one attack and I can definitely still stir some, stir some shit up here. So they're gonna go for the knockoff there. Knock my boots off of my non-existent feet. And one more waterfall does luckily take care of that thing as I don't get fully parrot. So Tinkaton going down is actually super nice. The thing is, can be extremely annoying. And now Gyarados is actually still in a pretty decent spot even being paralyzed. So uh, they get a free switch into whatever they want and they decide to go into the Great Tusk once again. Now I'm expecting this thing to probably just rapid spin. Um, so I just decided to stay and go for the waterfall. It is gonna spin around a little bit, knocks away the stealth rock, but I still do have Mudweiser around so I can set those up if needed. Their team isn't actually super scared of Stealth Rock regardless, but I do actually get fully parried there, uh, which is annoying. But the good news is Great Tusk actually doesn't have anything that can knock me out here. So 
Uh, they decide to go for the body press there. I'm thinking, do not get paralyzed, you shrimp, and he does not. So, luckily, uh, one more waterfall is going to take care of the Great Tusk. And Gyarados is still at least putting in a little bit of work. Great Tusk is annoying. Tinkaton was annoying in both two very scary Pokemon. So, now they get the free switch into Tyranitar. Now, one interesting thing you will note about this Tyranitar is it actually did not set up the Sand Stream. So, that leads me to believe that this is, in fact... Not a Tyranitar, but instead the Hisuian Zorark. Whenever the opponent has the Hisuian Zorark on their team, you really got to be playing on your toes because that thing's typing can make it really interesting, especially wanting to go for a fighting move against this Tyranitar, but it's actually ghost type. It's just, it's a whole thing. So I decided to go into Mudsdale. Now, the reason for that is basically just to sack this thing off. I'm feeling like I can actually use Serena for the actual Tyranitar to knock it out. Uh, plus, with that leftovers and this thing already had chip, I just decide letting this thing go down isn't a horrible idea. They have Azumarill in the back, they have Decidueye, and realistically, not the greatest matchup for that, that horse. So, I let that thing go down, but what that does do is opens the door for me to go into whatever I want. So, after thinking about it for a minute, it's actually a tough call. Normal Ghost, I do not have a great matchup on anything with that, uh, but I am going to decide to go into the Gengar. So, Gengar here is Focus Ash. They don't have any hazards up, so that is going to stay intact. And I actually have to basically whittle this thing down with Sludge Bomb because you cannot touch normal Ghost. I swear to God, extremely annoying. But they're actually going to end up switching out here. And to my surprise, going to end up bringing in the Azumarill. So Azumarill comes in on a nice little Sludge Bomb. And young golden ass Easter Bunny is not going to enjoy that because max special attack Gengar is actually not enough to kill it. However, I do end up getting the poison, uh, which is actually good because that kind of blocks me from taking an Aqua Jet and then breaking my Sash. But Sash Gengar actually kind of sucks here anyway, because against an opponent that has a Sandstream Tyranitar, it's, it's not going to help me out too much. So, uh, Azumarill goes down, and they get a free switch into, and this looks like the true Tyranitar, because we do see the Sandstream come out. Uh, so, my plan is actually to end up switching out here, and I do want to try to conserve Sash Gengar if possible. My plan is to now just go into Gyarados, I can get an easy Intimidate on this thing and make this thing a whole lot less scary. Um, and then get a better matchup with Serena against it. So, Gyarados comes in, does his job, scares the shit out of this thing, and it turns out it's actually Ice Beam Tyranitar. So, I don't know shit. I just like Hasui and Zorox running around, special Tyranitar. I don't know what's happening, but all I know is there is one floof ball on my team that has a solid matchup here, and that is gonna be my boy Swine Fu. You can do Kung Fu on your ass with some swine action in there, and also. This thing having uh, an evolution in this game allows it to get access to the Eviolite item. So it's extra bulky and basically does the same thing that Annihilate does with Rage Fist and Drain Punch. Uh, so I'm going to go for a nice little bulk up here and Tyranitar is going to switch out, of course. Uh, Floof Ball is this thing's arch enemy and they decide to go into Decidueye. So Decidueye is annoying here. I, I can really only Rage Fist or Poison Jab. Rage Fist is ideal and I'm thinking actually after a nice little bulk up I'm at plus one and then I'm gonna get hit by an attack here and then Rage Fist should actually kill this thing so both get hit by a little bit of Sandstorm but the plan A for Prime Ape is basically to be able to grab the knockout here nice and easy so I'm gonna go for the Rage Fist hoping that this thing is not Hisuian Zorak they go for the Bitter Malice which shows me yeah that's that's gonna be Zorak so it actually is gonna activate my Defiant so attack raises sharply however Rage Fist, of course, does not affect this thing, and I have been hoed by Hisuian Zorark for the first time today. That was, I was really considering clicking Poison Jab, but I just saw the kill with Rage Fist, and I got excited, and I just, I don't know, man. You're looking at Decidueye, and I just got, I, I got bamboozled, all right? Listen, it happens, okay? So, <laughs> unfortunately, Prime App does not get to do anything as uh, down I go. But listen, it's still fine. I've got another plan here, and it revolves around the fact that I believe Sandstorm is only up for one more turn, and that is this turn. So he gets hit by that Sandstorm, and now I get a free switch back into Gengar. So, the plan is this. I know I can't touch this thing with the Shadow Ball. I can only go for Sludge Bomb, which is not very effective, but it should be a two-hit KO here. Um, so I'm going to go for the Sludge Bomb, and after I take an attack here, Sandstorm wears off meaning my Focus Sash stays intact. So Sludge Bomb is a nice little 2-8 KO here. I do actually get the Poison, which shouldn't really matter that much, um, but it's going to reveal this thing's true self and his crazy-ass hair tentacles. I don't know, this thing's gross, but goes for the Bitter Malice. That does knock me down to 1 HP. I die to Sandstorm here. However, my 5,000 IQ tells me Sandstorm should wear off here, and then I can stay at 1 HP. So I actually curse Body. Uh, his attack doesn't really matter. Sandstorm goes away, so I do stay alive to see another day. 
Um, and at this point, I he can switch right back into Tyranitar. This is when I really wish I carried Focus Blast on this thing. Um, Destiny Bond is kind of the idea, but Sandstorm messes that up. So I go for the Sludge Bomb, and that is fantastic because I refuse to be hoed again by the Tentacles. So down goes the Zoroark, and now I'm really hoping they bring in Tyranitar, knowing uh, that one uh, Sandstorm hit is going to knock me out, but they actually instead go into Decidueye. So Decidueye probably wants to go for the Sucker Punch. However, I'm going to click Destiny Bond anyway. I'm, I'm thinking maybe he attacks. I do go for the Destiny Bond here, but he in fact does Sucker Punch. So if he went into Tyranitar, it actually would have been ideal. I could have Destiny Bonded on him, at least going for an attack, unless it's set up or something like that. But it, listen, this Gengar is in a tough spot, okay? His back is against the corner. And I don't have much to do here other than click Destiny Bond again, but they're too smart for that. He's actually going to end up switching out. Goes into the Tyranitar, which is the best play because after this turn, Sandstorm just kills me. Uh, I could have gone for an attack here, but I mean, Shadow Ball or Sludge Bomb isn't going to do much to Tyranitar and not any worthwhile chip. Uh, so it was worth it for me just to try to click the Destiny Bond there. Um, I do go down to the Sandstorm, but, you know, it's fine because of the fact that I do still have a plan for this Tyranitar and that comes in the form of the biggest ass in Pokemon history, aka Big Booty Judy, who can come in here in a power whip, should knock this thing out. I got long ass legs and hair that is ready for whipping. So I'm actually going to end up going for the Grass Terra just to ensure if this was like a defensive Tyranitar that it goes down. Um, so I go for the Terra Grass here. We just look an extra grassy. And with that Life Orb, there's pretty much no way that this thing lives a power whip if I can connect. So... Uh, I get a little bit of extra flowers on my head, and I just go right for the Power Whip. It does connect, and down goes the Tyranitar. So I was saving this Serena basically just to take care of Tyranitar once I realized that Mudsdale wasn't going to be the play. Plus, it was actually special attacking T-Tar anyway. So uh, down that thing goes, lose a little bit of HP, and now I'm pretty much set to win this match. I know that Decidueye can't knock me out in one hit, so it has to take an attack. Plus, it can't actually Sucker Punch me because of my ability. So... Here's how this is going to play out. In comes the Decidueye, the very last Pokemon. I'm going to go for the Power Whip. It's my highest damage output. I do actually connect two in a row, which is quite lucky. And this is going to knock this thing down well below half, which you absolutely love to see. I take a little bit of Life Orb recoil, but I know that I can take a Spirit Shackle from this thing. It's going to do just enough. Knocks me down to 17 HP, um, and I should live another Sandstorm hit. And if you're familiar with the powers of this plant girl, you will know Queenly Majesty, my ability, actually blocks incoming priority moves. So this thing cannot sucker punch me, and all I have to do is connect with an attack. Now my highest accuracy move is Play Rough at 90%. I'm going to go for the Play Rough here. He does try to sucker punch, but I say, bitch, I'm a queen. All I got to do is connect on this Play Rough and I win. However, I missed the Play Rough. I have truly, <laughs> I've truly never missed the Play Rough in such a bad situation. I was like... What? I swear to God, I've missed more play roughs in Scarlet and Violet's lifespan than I have ever. And <laughs> I refuse to believe that's a 90% accuracy move. Plus, hitting that or missing that when it was literally mattered most was wildly unfortunate. But that is, in fact, the game we play. I mean, it comes down to I hit two power whips, so, I mean, I got lucky anyway. But seriously, the connecting on the play rough would have won me the match there. Now all I can do is go into Rev Room. Um, and unfortunately, I'm actually Choice Scarf. If I wasn't Choice Scarf, I'd be in a pretty good spot. I go for the Parting Shot, kind of just just for shits and giggles, because I can't win this match. I just die to a Sucker Punch. Um, but I go for the, the Parting Shot. Now, that would have been great if I was able to switch my moves, because I think that actually allows me to live a Sucker Punch at this health, and then I could kill it with a Poison Jab. But I am Scarf and stuck into Parting Shot, so that is unfortunate. Now, the match time is actually close enough to the point where... I could almost like timer stall it, but I I'm just going to keep clicking parting shot here and just go down. To this decidual I deserves the dub, being able to dodge that play rough in the most opportune moment. So I actually end up living the spirit shock, which is kind of crazy. I can no longer escape. I'm straight up stuck out here. But that is going to be the end of the match. And yeah, that might have been the worst play rough miss of all time, at least on the channel. But thank you guys very much for watching. As always, leave a like on the video and I will see you guys next time. But if you stayed around to the very end of the match, you're truly the MVP and leave a comment saying play rough miss.